Hello, I'm Todd Weinberger from the Heartland Theatre Company Board of Directors, and welcome to an experiment we're calling Hot Shorts. You know, at Heartland Theatre Company, we've spent the pandemic keeping ourselves busy, keeping our creative juices flowing, because we're convinced that one day soon we will be back on our stage live, and we are equally convinced that when that happens, you will be there with us to be our live audience. No one's quite certain when that's going to happen, though. So for right now, we're involved with other projects. We've produced some radio dramas that have been very well received. We've got other projects in the works that you're going to be seeing over the next few weeks. And we do all this so that we can share our talents with the community and hopefully offer up some entertainment for these difficult times. We've also been spending our time keeping an eye on what other theater companies have been doing, and a lot of what we're seeing is online. Yes, theater organizations all over the nation have been mounting productions and then uploading them to various social media platforms. We thought that was a great idea, and we wanted to try it and take it one step further. So we created this. <laughs> what we want to do is focus on original works. So we recruited five of our favorite playwrights. Now, these are folks we knew from our annual 10-minute play festival, playwrights who are based all over the country. And once we got them writing, we recruited five directors to be a part of the project as well. They looked at audition videos that were submitted from actors all over the country, and it has all come together to an event that we're premiering now, and it is great to have you as a part of it. The best thing about all of this is we did it all safely. Everything was done through long distance using emails and texts and, of course, what else? Zoom meetings. The goal of the project was to create original works that embraced our current state of separation. We asked our playwrights to incorporate modern communication technology in their plays. And then we asked our directors to use their creativity to assess the strengths and weaknesses of that communication. If you're talking to a face on a computer screen, as opposed to a face on a human being, what changes? What doesn't change? These were the kinds of questions we wanted to address. And we wanted to copy some of the other organizations we'd seen and put all this together in a short period of time. That gives the project a sense of urgency. It creates a bit of a theatrical pressure cooker. In April, we didn't even have completed scripts. And now we're ready to show you what we've come up with. And it's going to get started in just a moment. You know, I just want to remind you that in Greek mythology, there were the gray eyes. Three sisters who could see everything going on on planet Earth thanks to a single eye that the three of them shared. You know, in Middle Earth, the eye of Sauron was evil, but it was all seeing. There on the dollar bill is a pyramid with an all-seeing eye above it, keeping an eye on the country. And if you lived in ancient Egypt and you wanted to ward off evil you'd better learn how to paint the eye of Horus. Well, here in 2021, we have our own all-seeing eye, and it looks like this. And what does it see? Stick around for a minute and you'll find out. This is Hot Shorts, a video experiment from Heartland Theater Company. We're delighted that you're a part of it. Enjoy the show. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to start by thanking you all for being here today. Now more than ever during these unprecedented times. No, don't say unprecedented times. Why not? It's cliche. Whenever I hear unprecedented times, I want to stab an ice pick through my head. Okay, fine, fine. How about during these uncertain times? Don't say times at all. Just get on with it. Well, I'm trying to, but you keep interrupting. <sighs> and now I lost my place. Oh, God. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> my, 
My brother Michael and I. Don't everyone knows I'm your brother. Can't you just say Michael and I? My brother Michael and I are so grateful for your support. Standing here surrounded by family and friends. You'll be sitting, won't you? Sitting here surrounded by. Uh, that just sounds weird, though. And you won't be surrounded by anyone. Okay. Um, surrounded virtually by family and friends. Ooh, or is it virtually surrounded by family and friends? Hmm. Surrounded, surrounded virtually by family and friends. Virtually surrounded by oh, family and friends. God. I think that's right. I think it's. I think it's. Hey. Hey, come back here. Where are you going? We're not I'm done. I'm going to get some tea. I'm just going to get some tea. Michael, come on. We really need to focus. Like, it's been almost a whole year since he died. We just we can't put this off any longer. So please stop procrastinating. I'm not procrastinating. I just really want some tea. Okay. Well, if you're that tired, maybe you should have some coffee. I'm not going to drink coffee at 1 in the morning. Ooh, is it really one in the morning there? Yikes. Yes, Katie, it is. Next time it wouldn't hurt for you to check the time zone. Just saying. Hmm. Well, I can't help it. It's my lunch hour. Ugh. I mean, I, I know it's late for you, but this was the only time that really worked with both of our schedules, you know? And it's, Anyway, I'm not the one who moved all the way to fucking Singapore. <laughs> so anyway, after I welcome everyone and, you know, thank them for coming, that's when we'll launch into the service. Just a sec. I'm going to send you a link to this article I found. I have some really good ideas and I want to get your opinion. Here you go. Did you get it? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Hold on. Um, how to host a virtual funeral or memorial service? Mm -hmm. Personally, I like to think of it as a celebration of life. I think that's what we should call it. Is this really necessary? Do we really need a how-to guide? Just read it. First, choose your streaming service. Mm -hmm. Zoom, right? I mean, it just assumed. That depends. Do you have the premium account? Because there's a 40-minute limit with the time with the free one. Yeah, my firm's account, but I'm, I can't use that. I guess one of us needs to upgrade. Oh, don't look at me. I think 40 minutes is plenty of time. <sighs> Fine. Uh, I'll get the premium. Okay. Okay, what is next? Consider adding a virtual background. Oh, yeah, I like that idea, don't you? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Michael. You know what a virtual background is. Don't pretend like you don't. Oh, like when you have the fake scenery and it seems like you're sitting on a tropical beach somewhere or the Golden Gate Bridge? Mm-hmm, yeah. Only ours wouldn't be a tropical island or a bridge. It would be, you know, just a nice, peaceful backdrop of a forest or <laughs> a sunset. Oh, actually, I think a sunset would be really appropriate considering the circumstances. I don't know. It sounds cheesy. It's not, it's not cheesy. It's, it's very tasteful. Really, look here, let me show you. Let's see, virtual background, okay. Mm -hmm. See, isn't that cool? Mm hmm. Hmm, like this. Okay, fine. 
I guess I am also in charge of the virtual background. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Uh, okay, where are we? Nah. Oh, oh, right. Create a slideshow of memories. Seriously, a slideshow. Yeah. So this is really a two part project. Um, I'll make the video and you can be in charge of the music. What? Like download stuff from Spotify? No, um, actually, I was I was hoping you might play something. Nope. Don't say no. No. I don't even have my guitar here. Michael, I can see your guitar right behind you. That, that's just my crappy backup. Anyway, I hardly played since I got here. Look, it doesn't have to be professional quality. Just a nice, meaningful, just. No. Are you kidding me? Play my guitar at a virtual funeral. Celebration of life. Forget it. I knew you'd say no. Then why did, then why'd you ask? All right, let's just move on. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, invite invite virtual attendees to participate. Yeah, let's do yeah that. so <clears throat> after the slideshow, you know, with the music, uh, we ask if anyone has any words they'd like to share. Who's going to have words to share? Lots of people. Um, Uncle Hank. Uh, Phil Geller from the Elks Club. Phil Phil Geller. Is he even still alive? <laughs> uh of course he's still alive. I mean, I'm almost positive he's still alive. Okay, I'll check. Um but that actually that actually reminds me. We should probably send out invitations so people can RSVP. Phil Geller. Um oh, but don't worry, I'm on it already. I found these really nice e-bites online and they're very tasteful, not cheesy at all. I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, I, I think we're done. Mm -hmm. Everything except the eulogy. We need to figure out how we want to handle that. Who's we? Us. You and I. Um... Do you think we should each speak separately or do like a like a joint presentation? Oh, I just thought that you would uh you would handle the toast yourself. The toast. Mm -hmm. It's called a eulogy, Michael. Uh, right. See, I, you would be much better at this than me. You should handle it. Okay, okay. So, um, in other words, it would be better if I just did everything myself. Yeah, that way, that way you don't have to be involved at all. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, Katie, I didn't say that. You called oh, me at yes. one in the morning, yes. all right? Yes, that is exactly what you said. Look, you know, Michael, I, I've had it up to here with your negative attitude. I've been busting my ass trying to put together a special event during these Yes, I'm going to say it. Don't. Unprecedented times. Ah. But whenever I make a suggestion, you either like piss all over it or you find some excuse not to be a part of it. Look, I know this sucks. This sucks because it has to be virtual. I know that. But I don't, we don't have any other options. And I just, I just don't understand why you can't be a little more supportive right now. I know you don't understand. You never did. Okay. All right. Well, then, um, why don't you explain it to me? The problem is not the fact that it's virtual. The problem is the fact that I hardly knew the guy. We're talking about your father. Yes, I am aware. I get that you like to pretend that we both have this awesome relationship with dad, but I can't do that. Okay, look, I know that you and dad had your differences, okay? But if you just focus on the good times. Good times, oh, like that camping trip you never took me to. Uh, oh 
come on. Well, with your allergies, it would have been a disaster anyway. Or the career day he never showed up for. Yeah, because he had an actual career. And what about the Rebels? What about them? He never came to hear us play. Not once. Dad said, couldn't be bothered. Michael, why are you dredging up these ancient childhood memories? Because they're the only ones I have. After he and mom divorced, we really didn't keep in touch. Do you know how many times he visited me once he moved to Seattle? Three. Three times in 17 years. And do you know how many times he would just call me up on the phone just to say, hey, how's it going? Okay, fine, Michael. He was a monster. Is that what you want me to say? I mean, are you satisfied or are you just going to live the rest of your life feeling bitter? I'm not bitter. And, and dad wasn't a monster. Okay, a monster is when you is when you beat your kids or you come home drunk every night or you or or you gamble away the college fund. That wasn't dad. He wasn't mean, he was just remote. Even sitting in the same room face to face, he was as remote as the man in the moon. <laughs> okay, I mean it's fair to say Communication was not one of his strengths. He never cared about a single thing that happened in my life. Maybe if I had been a superstar athlete <laughs> or if I had gone to law school like you. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess I was a big disappointment to him. <laughs> you were not a disappointment. Michael, look. Okay, I know dad was not exactly in touch with his feelings, okay, but, but down deep, he was proud of you. Michael, you should have heard him a year ago at Thanksgiving, going on and on and on. I mean, he just, the way he bragged about you, uh, telling everyone about his son, the genius entrepreneur, who just so happened to also be an incredibly talented musician. I mean, he would not shut up about you. It actually made me a little jealous. So. Are you just saying that to make me feel better? Actually, no. you know what? Nope. I don't care if you are. I'm going to believe it regardless. No, honest to God. Really. And if it helps at all, he was really looking forward to your next trip home. He kept saying that he hoped you hadn't forgotten how to play because he expected a front row seat at his next concert. Dad said that. Mm-hmm. I'm shocked. <laughs> well, I mean, people change and sometimes <sighs> they surprise you in a good way. But, but. Michael, I mean, isn't it also fair to say you're not the world's best communicator either? Mm -hmm. I mean, for instance, I didn't even know you were moving to Singapore until you landed in Chani Airport. Come on, Katie, that, 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 was, a, that was a spur of the moment decision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now that travel's off the table for a while and I can't come out to see you, well, now you're starting to feel pretty damn remote. Oh, don't be so dramatic. God, I'm only 9,000 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm serious. I mean, with mom and dad both gone now, you're the only family I've got. <laughs> Hope we don't lose touch. You think we will? Of course not. You won't let us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> okay, go to bed. Go to bed. I know it's late, and um, you can finalize everything tomorrow. Just... Give me a call whenever it's convenient for you. Doesn't matter what time, I'll make it work, okay? Oh, thanks. Thanks for that. And Katie? Yeah. 
tell me what you want me to play. Play? For the slideshow. Mm. Oh. No. <laughs> Why don't you surprise me? Okay. Sounds good. Uh, press and hold. And then. Rebels! One, two, three, go! There you are. Yeah, virtually speaking. I must say your um your Zoom pixels look particularly fetching today. Thanks. Your pixels don't look too shabby either. <laughs> you uh ready to run some lines? Last time we were doing the genuine flink. You uh want to stick with that? I guess. What? Is there some other play you'd prefer? I, no, that's not it. Are you no longer interested in practicing plays we may never perform? No, oh, no, I ro love running any lines with you. Well, then what is it? I don't know. <sighs> Nothing specific. I'm just in a bit of a funk, I guess. Actually, I know what you mean. I keep thinking of the good old days, too. <laughs> what good old days? What good old days? What do you think when we were able to perform in person? Really? Well, yeah. Even though it's only been a little over a year, it seems like an eternity. But now with the vaccine, we can get back to live performances. God, I can't wait. I can. What do you mean you can? I... I never performed on stage. You're kidding. Nope. Why didn't I know that? It never came up. Well, let me get this straight. You've only done online stuff. Yeah. My first play was the Zoom performance where we happily met and then a few others after that. And, and that's it. Outside of a couple of audio plays, yeah. Is that what's bothering you? That live theater coming back is unknown territory? I don't know. Maybe. Emma, you don't know what you're missing. I have an idea. What's that mean? I miss not having a script just out of eyesight that I can peek at. I would miss not having to worry about blocking and projecting to the back row. I would miss not having to wear slacks. You're not wearing slacks? No. A skirt? No. Shorts? No. 
Then what? I'll show you. No, 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 no. That's quite all right. Uh, it's just... okay. I'm wearing pajama pants. My go-to Zoom garb. <gasps> a regular fashion plate. You really think so? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, <clears throat> maybe in a in a bohemian sort of way. <laughs> I am... Um, Definitely ready for theater to be back the way it was. You'll love it. I'm not so sure. Come on, Emma. The excitement of a live audience? An online audience is live. You assume they're live, but you never know for certain, do you? They may be distracted or checking out social media, watching a ball game. They may be napping or even comatose. One or two may have even croaked during the performance. Who's to say? <laughs> then there's the advantage of audience feedback, their immediate response. Which can be negative. So what? That can help us get better. I mean, who do we perform for now? A computer camera? A microphone? It's true. We don't got any jeers or cat calls, any boos or hisses. But you also never hear a spontaneous laugh or gasp. And you certainly never get a standing ovation. Yeah, okay, but online you can reach a worldwide audience. The last online play I was in had viewers from all over the country, plus Canada and the UK. Well, I hope they weren't going to the bathroom during your part. They wouldn't dare. Plus, an online audience doesn't have to dress up, get a babysitter, drive across town, find a parking space, wait in the will call line, get stuck in traffic. I'm not saying there's not a place for online performance. Obviously, there is. But they can never replace live performances. Never. That may be, but I... Uh, I think I'll stick with online. Emma? Chalk it up to me being sentimental. After all, that's how we met. And that's how we've continued to meet, only online. I realize we live a few hours apart, so we haven't really gotten together because of the virus, but with the vaccine, we'll finally be able to meet in person. Aren't you looking forward to that? Of course I am. It'll be great. I think so too. And you know what? Theaters like relationships in that way. It's always better in person. That was nicely done. <laughs> it kind of was, wasn't it? But I still think online's the way for me to go. Is it, um, is it because you're nervous performing in front of a live audience? I, I don't know. Maybe that's part of it? I'm sure I'd have more butterflies than a field full of milkweed, but nevertheless... Sometimes the best things happen when we step outside our comfort zone. But besides all that, there's a much bigger concern. What? Us? What about us? We need to find out what we've got going together. Don't we? Definitely. But you'll be doing our online thing and I'll be back auditioning, rehearsing and performing in a real theater and it's just- That shouldn't affect anything. We travel in separate circles, go opposite directions, possibly begin to grow apart. Couples make it through all kinds of circumstances, Marcy. Different careers, different cities, different friends. Not to say it can't work, but why take the chance? Besides, wouldn't you want to be in another play together someday? Well, sure. But this time, on a real stage, we'd be able to look into each other's eyes, react to each other's physical presence. And what if the play called for us to touch or, or hug? or even kiss. <laughs> Sorry, but that ain't happening online. 
I know. Do you realize what a Zoom play is like? You're not going to paint a pretty picture here, are you? A Zoom play is like watching Godzilla versus Kong on a smartphone. It's like getting the plot for War and Peace from Wikipedia. It's like, it's like saying I love you with an emoji. You get the idea of it, the gist, but not the true experience. Not what was actually intended. Okay. Don't we have to give our relationship our best shot? Absolutely. You know what they say, the couple that's in a play together stays together. That may not be the exact quote, but you're right. When it's safe to get back on stage, we could even audition for the same play. We both may not get parts. No, but isn't it worth a try? Emma? Yeah, Marcy, it is. And I know just where we could begin. The last play I was in before everything shut down was at Heartland Theater. I loved it. Heartland Theater? Where's that? Normal. Normal, Illinois. I'm ready to return. be visited by three ghosts who sent this wait meeting updated you will be visited by two ghosts <laughs> okay delete david david cooper oh, wait sorry david connor Hey, you there? Yes, I'm here. What? Who's doing this? Donna? Is this some kind of prank? No, I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Didn't you get my meeting invite? I deleted it. How are you doing this? I never accepted that invite. No one does. But luckily, I'm supernatural, so I can get around that stuff. Like I said, I'm a ghost of Christmas past. It's July. Mm, Christmas past, future present are all just business titles. These days, there are a lot of ghosts performing a variety of duties. Workflow issues. I'm a ghost of Christmas past on the 4th of July team. It's considered a lesser team. It's confusing. I understand we've been through a lot of reorganizations. Anyway, I have a meeting right after this one, so we should get started. Started what? I'm, I'm not believing this. I mean, you're claiming you're a ghost from the past, like out of the Dickens novel? <laughs> I'm supposed to buy that? I mean, shouldn't you have chains hanging on you? You're thinking of Jacob Marley. That was Scrooge's dead business partner. Our dress code is fairly liberal since we started working from home. Watch, I'll prove I'm a ghost. Look behind you. <laughs> Ta -da! You must be the worst ghost they have. God. Look, I've got pizza rolls in the oven, so can we just do whatever it is you need to do and move this along? Do I need to feed some hungry kid or buy a turkey for a family? I mean, can I just have it delivered? Oh, do you have an app? No, no app, but I'm gonna jot that down for our next time home meeting. Like I said, I'm a ghost of Christmas past 4th of, 4th of July team. 
And I called this meeting today because you're scheduled to be met by two ghosts. We're gonna talk about some behaviors and try to identify some solutions. Sound good? Good. Oh my God, even hauntings are boring over Zoom. Uncalled for? Besides, what makes you think you deserve a full show? All you do is sit around and act like a jerk to people online. Hey, Scrooge was a jerk. Look at the production he got. Mm. Huh? The difference between the two of you is that he was an interesting jerk. Hey. His past had a little love story and hopes and dreams. You're just sort of a troll. I had hopes and dreams. Mm. I have hopes and dreams. Give me an example of your hopes and dreams. I don't know you that well. Fair enough. One of the hazards of these remote meetings, it's hard to build a connection. Let's try this. I'll show you something from your past and we'll see if it stirs any emotions. Uh, do we have to do this? I have the power to shut off your internet connection if you don't play along, so yeah. All right, let's get this over with. This is an image from your past. That is a drawing of some stick figures. Looks like they're at the uh, Eiffel Tower. Oh, it's our family trip to France. Wow, you are a really bad artist. Okay, that's true. Nevertheless, what do you remember about that? <sighs> my mom and dad took my brother, sister, and me to France during summer vacation and <sighs> we visited Paris and we took a train through the countryside. And then at the end, we went to Spain for a couple of days. It was really awesome. Mom and dad talked about it for like a year before we went. And for years after. <sighs> Mom worked an extra job and saved up so we'd have spending money over there. She said she wanted to make sure we could eat whatever we wanted. We weren't rich, so it was a big deal for us to do something like that. She just liked France or what? That, and she said it was important for us to experience something like this as a family. Important how? To build bonds and lifetime memories, that type of thing. Did it? Um, yeah, is that it? You tell me. I'm good. Yeah, you're good. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Nothing comes to mind? Nothing about that memory or discussion makes you think of anything? Yeah, it was a fun trip. I was 15. It was a family vacation like millions of other people take. Most of it. Oh, like millions like that, of Okay, then. If you're all set, I'll uh, turn it over to a Ghost of Christmas Future. Hey, what happened to the Ghost of Christmas present? Mm, he has Wi-Fi issues. That's why the meeting notification was changed from three ghosts to two. I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed. What was the ghost of Christmas present going to add anyway? I mean, what you're doing right now is pretty much it, right? Sitting in front of a computer, eating, complaining. You need five minutes to wrap that up? Hey, Scrooge's ghost showed him things happening to other people. Ah, oh, you wanna know what other people are doing? Which ones? I can tell you, I have access. I don't know, isn't that part of the act? I'm shown something I should see. Okay, let's see. I see one of your coworkers walking her dog, Rita. She's the one you ridicule on your Twitter account without actually naming her. I mention her because that's about as close a relationship as you have with a coworker, making fun of one on social media. It's a connection of sorts, I suppose. 
though she'd probably be surprised to find out about it, considering you're polite to her face. The rest of your coworkers you have strictly superficial relationships with. They do have lives, though. Uh, Mary is at her son's soccer game. Jeff is camping. Sam is in a kickboxing class. <laughs> Sam kickboxes. <laughs> that's... That's what? Nothing. I know what you meant. She has a weight problem. She's aware. She and a friend decided to take kickboxing classes on the weekend. Helps her feel good about herself. She's been depressed. You know her husband died last year, right? Remember, you skipped the funeral. A lot of your coworkers went, but you had a thing. A new Marvel movie, I believe. Well, when you say it like that, it sounds callous. Oh, did you still want the rest of the Ghost of Christmas Present report? I'm good. I can tell you what your parents are doing, your siblings. Well, they're decorating for the party they hold. I said I'm good. Okay, well, hang tight then. I'm going to try to hand the meeting over to a Ghost of Christmas Future for the July team. Never know what you'll get there. They can be an odd bunch. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. Oh, hey, before I forget, you're going to get an email with a survey asking how I did. If you wouldn't mind filling that out, that'd be great. Sure. Okay, one sec. Have a nice day. Hey, what's up? You're a ghost of Christmas future? That's me. What do we have here? Val says you're a callous kind of jerk to people. Hey. <laughs> Don't be mad. I understand. I can get the same way. A lot of times I dress up like the Grim Reaper and just point at people's graves without saying a word. <laughs> yeah, like, there's your grave. You're going to die soon. Fix your life. So I get it. Sometimes you just don't feel like dealing with people. Well, we got to grow, right? Got to get better every day. Isn't that why we're here today? I honestly don't know for certain. This was rather sudden. Yeah, I hear that. Let me read just a bit more. Sorry, I didn't have a lot of time to prep. Okay, I see. Yeah, you're a callous jerk. Different to people's feelings. Says uh, here, your parents are getting ready for a uh, 4th of July party. Restrictions are lifted, they're vaccinated, parties outside. Invited most of your family, it looks like. And? And you never RSVP. Never called them at all. What's the point? We don't get along. Why pretend? They're in their late 70s. What kind of trouble could they be? They beat you as a child. They no. steal money from you. No. Uh, you know, verbally abuse you. No. So what is it? We have different politics. Politics. <laughs> politics. You're estranged from your parents over politics? Look, I tried. I tried to ignore it. I tried to reason with them. It's my whole family, really. It's just easier not to deal with them. This really is one of my lamest assignments. I should have just pointed to your parents' graves. They're dying? We're all dying eventually. Well, not me, I'm a ghost. You are. I, I could tell you the date of their death if you'd like. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's, that's the beauty of being able to show gravestones. People are like, mm, oh my gosh, they're gonna die next month. I better straighten up. Would that straighten you up? Get you to overlook the fact that you've alienated your parents because you can't stop fixating on the news? 
Hey, some things are too big to overlook. Oh, of course. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Never mind. I don't want to know. The fact of the matter is that you'd rather sit here in front of your computer and fester and say nasty things to people and about people online instead of going over to your parents' house and making a human connection. Eat a hot dog. They're not innocents in this, you know? Who is? Yeah, what's the most egregious sin they committed, though? Facebook posts, comments in mixed company. That's worth writing off people you love? I call them sometimes. I have it right here. You called them twice in the past year. You haven't physically seen them in two. You used all your vacation days last year going nowhere. Just laying around your house doing a bunch of nothing. And don't mention the quarantines. The year before that, it was the same. All right, thanks for your concern. You know who I am, right? You know what I can see? I can see your parents dying at some point. Your siblings are there at the end. You're not, you're busy. It fills them with sadness. I see you dying, alone, bitter, empty. You think any of these causes you consider bigger than your, than your family relationships will matter at the end? You think one person getting elected over another will make a difference when you go? It won't. I can tell you right now what your biggest regret will be. I'm pressed for time, so I'll make this clear as day. You'll regret being unkind to people, family, coworkers, people online, about trivial matters, actual real human beings, that you contributed unkindness to them in a thousand little ways. I don't need to listen to this. Oh, trust me, you do. You're getting off lucky. If you piss me off, I'll show up at 3 a.m. and drag you out of bed in your pajamas and take you to a cemetery on a weeknight. You know who I am, right? Yes. Good. Look, Dave. Your parents are having a 4th of July party. It's important for them. Your brother and sister will be there. They want to see you. Did, did, did your parents, did, you know, did, did Christmas past tell you about uh, what's happening with your sister the past year? What about her? You're unreal. You know that your sister's had a hard time this past year, right? How so? You can figure that out. Let me just say, it's been very, very hard for her. Hard for her, hard for your parents. You're giving me a guilt trip? <laughs> of course I'm giving you a guilt trip. That's my job. My next meeting's in a sec, but let me tell you something. You need to get your act together. You need to understand there's value in human kindness. These battles that you're fighting with your parents, other people online, it's not a good thing. It's going to leave you empty inside. You're taking people at their worst, family, coworkers, whoever, and indicting them. Believe me, if people took you at your worst, you'd be in a bad way. So you need to make a choice. Win these trivial battles with your parents or whoever over causes you consider noble now. Make yourself feel better one insult at a time. Or you can actually go out and make a human connection. Maybe with your parents. Look them in the face and understand that they're like you. Imperfect. But I'm not your therapist. Your choice is yours. I'm just here to tell you the scoop.
Okay. So, yeah. Um, before uh, I go, let me let me tell you, uh, you're going to get. Uh, I'll fill out the survey. Oh, okay. Thank you for your time. And have a nice day. Hi, mom. Hi, dad. It's David. I uh, wanted to let you know that I got your invite to the party and uh, I'm, hey, mom, hey, <laughs> you're there. Um, yeah, yeah, yes. No, um, yeah, I'm good. How, how are you? Hazel, what's up? Nothing much. You're the one with all the excitement. <laughs> this thing? Yeah, that thing. It's probably nothing. Probably. Maybe you should just throw it out. <laughs> no, no, it's just, it's too strange. I mean, what if it's dangerous? It doesn't look dangerous. <laughs> How can you tell? I don't know, no sharp edges, no skull and crossbones. <laughs> Skull and... Oh, it's the symbol for poison. That's right. <laughs> You're funny sometimes, Hazel. How's that, Sam? Well, you're very down to earth most of the time, and then you act like you're just learning something that everybody knows. Well, maybe I'm not so down to earth as you think. Hey, you're the only normal one. You think I'm normal? Let me pause on that. I don't want to offend you. Normal can mean a lot of things, but in that video chat group, you're the one who doesn't seem crazy. Well, thanks, I guess. I mean, it is a UFO discussion group, so really we're all crazy, right? But you're the one who holds back from wild speculation. Well, when you put it that way, I see what you mean. No hard feelings about being called normal? No. <laughs> because I wouldn't want to hurt your feelings. Why not? Well, because, because I like you. I like you too, Sam. No, uh, I mean something more. You don't really know me. I feel like I sort of do. I mean, after the big chats, you and I often end up just chatting alone together uh, like this. There's a reason for that. What reason? Well, for one thing, you're the only one whose theories really make any sense. <laughs> I thank you. So, about this object of yours? This unidentified object? <laughs> yes. Um, I think that you should just put it back in the dirt where you found it. No way. I, I think this is big. I mean, what is this material? I can't even put a scratch in it. So what's your plan? X-ray. You don't want to do that. I really do. You really don't. Bad things will happen. Bad? Cataclysmic. What, like an explosion? A vaporization event. What? It will leave a large crater. This isn't like you. What do you mean? Well, usually you're the sensible one, sticking to the known facts. It's not sensible to blast a hole in your planet. My planet. That's right. Do you want a hole in it? My planet. You know, I, I'm not sure I've ever heard you say where you're from. I can't really talk about it. Somewhere far away? You could say that. And you're pretty sure I don't want to x-ray this thing. Dead sure. Where did you find that thing exactly? There's a big crater here in Arizona. Meteor crater. Yeah, Behringer crater. That's right. East of Flagstaff, 49,000 years old. Yeah, about. Yeah, about. 
a friend of mine found it. It's private land. I don't think he was really supposed to be in there, but I bought it off of him. Paid good money. And now you're dying to know what's inside it? I sure am. Oh, this isn't good. Uh, listen, Hazel, can I ask you a crazy question? Fire away. Are you an alien? <laughs> Do you mean, am I a lizard in disguise? No, you see me as I am, a human. That's an interesting answer. Uh, do you mind if I ask a follow-up? Yeah, you might as well. Are you from Earth? Humans evolved on Earth. It's their natural habitat. Where else could I be from? Another interesting answer. Uh, one more question. This isn't really relevant. Oh, it sure is, Hazel. Uh, were you born on Earth? Supposing I wasn't. Okay. Supposing I wasn't on Earth right now. Are you saying? No, I'm not saying anything. I'm supposing. Supposing. And so imagine that I had a way of knowing for a fact that you would be better off leaving that thing alone. You're freaking me out, Hazel. You're kind of freaking me out too. You're going to get yourself blown up. I mean, I wanted to meet you someday. What? You... You always steer the conversation away from anything personal, but I've always felt this strange connection to you ever since you first showed up in the chat group. Yeah, I've sensed that about you. And now you're telling me you're out in space? Well, let's suppose. How far should I suppose? Are you in orbit? No. Are you in this solar system? Farther. Light years away? Let's suppose. How can that even be? I, I mean, how can we be having instantaneous communication when the speed of light... Is... I can't explain the technology to you. I mean, I could, but I'm not allowed to. Do you, do you have any plans to visit? I, I wanted to meet you in person. You don't have a girlfriend, do you? No. And you thought I would make a good girlfriend? <laughs> I suppose I did. I feel honored. But you haven't answered my question. Do, do you have any plans to visit? No. I mean, let's suppose that the masters have worked out a way to communicate faster than the speed of light. Masters? But they still haven't actually solved the travel problem. That still takes thousands of years between your planet and mine. Thousands of years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you and I both set off tomorrow trying to meet halfway, we would die of old age before we met. It's horrible. It's just a fact. No, no, that can't be a fact. We're just supposing here. But what were you saying about masters? beings, a very old civilization, interested in humans. They treat us well. Masters, like masters and slaves? No, more like masters and pets. You have a dog, don't you? Yes, and how on earth did you get to this place? You, you were born there? We're not exactly born, it's more automated, but yes, my ancestors came from Earth long ago. How long? Well, we only had stone tools, but the master saw some kind of promise in us. How long? 49,000 years ago, about. The meteor crater. Yeah, one of the ships, it went down hard. My ancestors were on the other ship. <sighs> Lucky them. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> this is a crazy story. It is, isn't it? But if, if travel is such a problem, what is with the mysterious lights in the sky, the, the UFOs? It's communication, instantaneous communication, remember? You just don't understand it yet, but give it time. And the abductions? Imaginary. The last actual abduction was when my people got picked up in the Paleolithic. 
You've really got your details worked out. I do, don't I? So maybe you should listen to me and just get rid of it. Now? No way. It's what the masters always say. We're too curious. I don't think I like these masters. Keep in mind, they're observing you. I don't think I like that either. We may need to stand up to them someday. Look, I shouldn't be telling you this, but take it to Professor Robert Fisher at Caltech. Tell him that it contains encapsulated antimatter. Encapsulated antimatter. Antiprotons. It's it's a fuel cell, and under no circumstances should it be subjected to X-ray bombardment. Robert Fisher. He's the closest to understanding the physics involved. I see. You're probably never going to see me again. What? You'll see somebody who looks and sounds like me in the chat room. What are you talking about? I have a lot of clone sisters. Reproduction here is kind of automated. Hazel. I've gone way over the line here. This was all just some crazy story, okay? This conversation is not being monitored. Hazel, are you going to be all right? I love you. Hazel? I've always wanted to say that to somebody. Press one if you are male, or two if you are female. Um, yeah. Thank you for choosing the Confessomatic, bringing absolution into the 21st century. We have achieved a virus-free method for forgiveness and to cleanse us of our sins. It allows you to social distance from your fellow men, but not from God. Plus, thanks to a generous donation, we can bring the Confessomatic to neighborhood Walmarts, making saving your soul from eternal damnation easier and even more convenient. Yeah, well, it's a, it is a bit unusual, but you know, I, I guess this is progress, right? <laughs> it certainly is more difficult to skip confession when I'm right here looking for boxer shorts and rotisserie chicken. <laughs> Have you examined your conscience for a true desire to repent? Yes, yes, I have. And, and I feel terrible about my sins. And, and I, I, I need to... Good. Uh, Please begin by reading the message posted on the wall in front of you. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, um, uh, forgive me, Father. For... Do I call you Father? It, my... Anyway, uh, I have sinned, uh, copyright 1962, Our Lady of Perpetual Chastisement, printed in the U. Oh, no, <laughs> I see. Oh, no, no, that's just extra stuff, just, just written on the paper. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bless you, my son. Please enter the number of days since your last confession and press enter. Oh, uh, all right, well, uh, let's see. Um, oh, let's see. oh, all right. Uh, Five thousand two hundred and sixteen days. Yeah, I, I, I kind of lost track, but, but but I needed to come back. Please touch the screen to indicate the type of sin or sins you have committed. Please select all applicable responses. If necessary, press and hold us in to deselect it. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, 
well, it's, it, it's not gluttony or pride, and it isn't sloth either. Hmm, let me see. Oh, oh, there's a there's a longer list. Oh, well, those were just the mortal sins. <laughs> there's a there's a whole other menu that expands. It's oh my, there's so many. I notice it's taking you a while to decide. Please understand that everything you say is confidential. Yeah. Of course, your session may be recorded for quality assurance purposes. Well, gosh, I'm not sure that I'm really... Be aware that there are a multitude of sins to choose from. In all honesty, almost anything in excess can be considered a sin. Yeah. Eating too much, having impure thoughts, hurting another person by your words or actions, stealing, cohabitation before marriage, using illegal drugs, and of course, self-pollution. The list is quite extensive. If needed, scroll down through the 17 pages of possible sins to find yours. Jeez, well, I wonder, let's see. Uh, oh, well, uh, willfully missing mass on Sundays, maybe? No, yeah, no, no, for sure. I, I, I like to sleep in. That's the only chance that I get. It seems a shame that that's a sin, you know, but I, I get it. So uh, anyway, here goes. Uh, there. You chose willfully missing mass on Sundays as your sin. Have you committed any other sins? Please press enter when you have listed all your sins. You may enter as many as you need to be forgiven for. Well, if I, you know, if, I, if I'm being honest, you know, maybe uh, involvement in cult practices. It depends on how you define a cult, I guess. But a, a friend of a friend of mine on Facebook was ranting about uh, demonic practices in Dungeons and Dragons. And, you know, and that got to me thinking maybe, uh, maybe it is a cult. You know what? I, I, I'll just, I'll, I'll pick it anyway. Well, I'm not sure that this really counts as a cult. It, it's all so very confusing. Now, let's see, let's see. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, oh yeah, uh, uh, failure to, to fast on Good Friday. Yeah, yeah, I had a, a hamburger and onion rings last Friday, Good Friday, and, uh, you know, but I wasn't, I wasn't aware that it was Good Friday, you see, so uh, I wonder if that really counts. Well, it wasn't intentional. I, I, I just lost track of the days. Everybody does that nowadays. You know, but I, you know, I'll enter it too. And uh, I guess uh, hmm, using illicit drugs. <laughs> well, I guess I almost got nailed by that one, huh? <laughs> but thank God, oops, it's, it's, it's legal here in Illinois now. Except it's still illegal federally. But aren't church and state supposed to be separate? Oh, whatever, I'll just... I'll just check it and be damned. Let's see. Okay, what's next? Oh, fornication. Well, how is that defined? I mean, uh, oh, 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 it includes premarital sex, porn, group sex. Oh, man, am I in trouble. Okay, well, I, I, I better add that one, and that one, and most definitely that one. Whew. Oh, yep, yep, and, and hit, see, hit enter. There we go. <laughs> That's um, <clears throat> quite a list, my son. Are you sure that's all? Well, uh, be honest, this is between you and God. Just one more little sin that might have slipped your mind. Hmm? Okay, okay. Self-abuse. Uh, I'm not sorry, sorry. Jeez, you are worse than my mom. Well, at least I don't have to worry about you walking in on me like she used to, though, huh? <laughs> Very good. Would you care to describe your sins? 
Well, I, I played Dungeons and Dragons on Sunday night with a group of friends and, uh, and we've been doing it for years. But recently I, I've begun to bother, it began to bother me a little bit that uh, after I saw the, those articles on the internet, that it's sort of cult-like, isn't it? I mean, there's a leader and, and we follow what that leader says without opposition. It's against religion, except the one that we make up. And uh, we do fight demons though. And I play a cleric which I guess is sort of sacrilegious given my erratic church attendance, but well, I guess it's worse that we play on Sundays, but you know, we all work other days. And fornication, porn, well, geez, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a guy and I'm single. Of course I look at porn and I self abuse when I do it. I'm sorry, sorry. Sure doesn't feel like a sin. After all, God gave me this body, and I am obligated to use it in uh, in any everything uh, to do whatever everything it can do. So, uh, and I have a girlfriend, and and we like to fool around. And I'm not a eunuch, and I don't apologize for that. Look, I'm I'm sorry. I I haven't been to confession in so long. You see, it's. It's just that my, my, my great aunt, she, she fell over backwards on a garden gnome last week and uh, I bought it for her and, and she got a concussion and well, she ended up with a brain bleed and she died yesterday. I'm sorry for your loss, my son. Yeah, so the funeral's tomorrow and I realize I, I don't have any clean underwear, see? And my great aunt always told me to wear clean underwear in case you have to go to the ER. And uh, so I realized I either have to do laundry or go get some new underwear. But, you know, so this was easier. <laughs> and so I'll, I'll wear clean underwear as kind of a, a tribute to her. You know, and I remember something else she used to tell me. She said, you know, we're all running out of time. Mortality kind of kind of hit me right between the eyes. So, so when I saw the confessomatic here at Walmart, I, I, I kind of knew what I had to do. Uh, I felt the need to confess. I guess she was right. We're all running out of time. You never know when a garden gnome will cross your path. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, this is all I can remember. So I. You know, I'm sorry for these and all my sins. So, uh, oh yeah, yeah, I forgot to hit enter there. Very good. May the Lord bless you and keep you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. your sins have been noted and forgiven. One moment as I reflect upon your penance. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Should you require more confession, next week I will be at the Walmart on West College. Oh, well, okay, Father. Uh, you know, I'll do my best to be there. Uh, thank you. Uh. <sighs> yeah, hey, Joe. Dave here. Listen, I, I just got done doing the Catholic gig, and it, it was a nightmare. Look, I'm not even Catholic, and trying to portray a synthetic android priest, well, it's it's really pushing my acting chops, you know? Well, yeah, the, the script you gave me helps, but not everyone follows it, and that kind of pisses me off, you know? Look, what else have you got? A what? A, a rent a rabbi? Are you crazy? I could barely play a priest and he, and you want me to be a rabbi. Well, this is going to cost you extra. 
<laughs> no, no, no. More than that. Uh, how much? Well, I, <laughs> I guess I can go rent fiddle around the roof, um, watch it a few times and, and, you know, try and figure it out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm free for that on Friday, but no circumcisions. <laughs>